Aren't you too young to be the dentist? Your patient asks you as they cautiously lift a single eyebrow and size you up a little bit. You aren't quite sure if they're being rude or if they're nervous or if they're just trying to make casual conversation. Virtually every new dentist has gone through the awkward moment when you're treating patients your first couple years out of school, um, especially that very first year. Hey, maybe the person that you're treating really is your first patient you've ever really seen as a real dentist since you've graduated. Maybe they're really that first one, but, but maybe not. Maybe you're 35 years old and you still look like a 20 something. So you've been managing these type of questions uh, related to your age and related to your appearance more times than you can account. Being a solo practice owner uh, myself at only age 27, this question was rampant. I got it all the time. Um, you can look at my blog and see my first post I made when I the first day I opened my office. Um, but yes, I've definitely matured and evolved significantly beyond my 27-year-old self today. But at the same time, my 27-year-old self could definitely, you know, more than so carry myself as a, a dentist, doctor, and a practice owner, more than capable. So there's no reason to feel bad about a patient questioning your youth. The factor of the matter, the fact of the matter is, I strongly believe from my own personal experience that the majority of patients who ask questions like this are doing so primarily just to make conversation. After all, they just met you. They know nothing about you. They don't know anything about you right now except for what they see. And maybe what they see is that you look about 30 years younger than their last dentist who had gray hair. So it's a noticeably striking difference from their perspective, which again, at this time, just meeting you is really all they have to go off of right now. Secondarily, they're testing you a little bit. They're testing you with like some softball questions uh, and quell that little anxiety in the back of their head uh, that wonders if you really know what you're doing with that needle and with that drill. Cause hey, you look kind of young. How long have you been doing this? Uh, and I know that there are some of you out there who have been asked questions like this and actually had it rattle you a little bit. You've actually had it maybe shake your confidence, maybe hurt your feelings, maybe question if you really are good enough yet because of your age, okay? There was a study conducted by the Harvard School of Public Health that evaluated a case sample size of three quarters of a million people. That's a really big case size over multiple hospitals all around the country. Um, and it examined the mortality rate uh, after a 30-day hospital stay um, from the point of admission. So admitted to the hospital 30 days and we, we look at the mortality rate. And they looked at it from a cross section of the mortality rate in correlation with the age of the patient that the physician was assigned to. Lo and behold, there was actually a very clear and very linear trend. There's a link to the Harvard study in the article. As the patient's physician's age increased, not as the patient's age increased, as the patient's physician's age increased, the mortality of the patients increased, with the lowest mortality rates being under the care of doctors who were under the age of 40, and the highest mortality rates were under doctors over the age of 60. Now, this is not exactly the same situation as being in a dental office, but the point of it is, so what if you're young? You are young, and that is not necessarily a bad thing. Where older doctors are more versed with experience and wisdom, younger doctors may be more versed on modern technology, modern techniques, and treatment protocols. I used to joke with patients who told me that I looked young, that it meant that my eyes were fresh and my hands were steady. These are probably things that you want from your dentist, and I say that with a wink usually got a laugh and, you know, it kind of, they're like, oh yeah, you know, that, that's a good point. And it kind of put them, put them at ease and put me at ease too. Uh, statements such as this serve to reframe the situation with a more positive light on you. Um, in that particular example, uh, there is evidence of nerve damage and sensation loss in the wrists over time with dentists, um, approximately one in five which has been clearly documented. So there's a link to that study too, like one in five older dentists have nerve damage in their hands and wrists. So, you know, if someone says, you look young, say that means my eyes are fresh and my hands are steady. That might actually be true on average, okay? But let's discuss in detail some more ways that we can handle this. The first thing is that you have to assert your confidence as a young dentist, okay? As a young doctor, both verbally and visually, whatever that means 
for you. It will mean different things for different people, but you want to assert your confidence both verbally and visually. Okay. Personally, I like to go to work in formal attire. I wear a white dress shirt, slacks, and a tie. I wear that every single day. You might even catch me walking to the office with like a sp nice sports coat um, added into the mix as well. This is the type of attire that makes me feel my best and most confident when I'm at work. And when you feel that way, your patients will pick up on that energy. Okay. Uh, this doesn't mean you have to dress in like a shirt and tie every day or use uh, something comparable. But for me, that's what makes me feel confident and comfortable. You and I have all had moments where like we're walking in the store or we're in a restaurant and we're just seeing the employees work. And then we see another worker and we go, that person must be the manager. You have no idea like if they're really the manager or even why you think that, but something just tells you that that person must be the manager. Something about their swagger and something about their confidence just tells you that this person knows what they're doing a little bit more than everybody else does. Uh, the way they move, the way they talk, just the way they carry themselves. Um, so think about it. If you and your team were all dressed exactly the same and in the same room, would a stranger be able to guess that you are the doctor, the leader of the office, just by the way that you carry yourself? This is the vibe that you'll want to establish for yourself as quickly as possible as a young doctor. I know many of you are comfortable in scrubs. I like to wear professional attire. That works for me and is comfortable for me. Both scrubs and professional attire can send a professional message, but I always go with the tie. Uh, to me, scrubs feel more casual, which I felt would not be helping me looking like a young doctor. Okay. Another big category is you want to control the narrative when it comes to these age and appearance related questions. So recall many of the patients who are asking, how old are you and how long have you been doing this? Or aren't you too young to be a dentist? are doing one of two things. One, they're just trying to make conversation because they don't know you and the appearance is something that they can observe. Number two, they're nervous. When people are nervous, whether just because they're at the dentist or because you look young, but more likely they're at the dentist and they're nervous because that's scary for a lot of people. Um, but when people are nervous, there is a human tendency to try to create a sense of nervousness in the other person as well. In a strange way, that makes some people feel more comfortable or like they have more power over the situation to make you feel nervous like they feel nervous. So don't get caught up in that game. Control the narrative. And you can easily do this, for example, by using questions. So ask them back. That's a good question. How old do you think I am? This is a great one for several reasons. Number one, it puts the onus back on them and kind of confronts them about their rude question. Number two, it gets them to actually think about it. They might even follow up and say, well, how long does it take to become a dentist? How long do you have to go to school? And when you answer them that you've been in school to do this for eight years or nine years if you did a GPR, they will quickly realize that no, you are not a child. Um, and then actually make them guess. Like if you ask this question, actually make them guess what your age is, you know? Um, it's up to you if you want to tell them if they're right or not. I usually turn it into somewhat of a guessing game and have fun with it. And I say, oh, nope, you're getting warmer. 32, nope, nope, now you're getting colder. Turning the scenario into a game delegitimizes the question. It delegitimizes their question when you turn it into a game. It relieves some of the stress and you can get a few laughs and can build rapport by having some fun with banter. Okay, you can also answer with story framing. So answering with story framing solves the problem of them not knowing anything about you, okay? Remember, they don't know anything about you other than your physical appearance, so they give you this question. So the story framing method will potentially build rapport by teaching them a little bit about who you are while at the same time opening up dialogue for another non-age related conversation, okay? An approach like this can be a great tool to set a nervous patient at ease. You may say, when they say, are you, how old are you? You say, I'm old enough to have three kids, two boys and a girl. Do you have any kids? Boom. They now know you are a parent. They know someone trusts you enough to have kids with you. And we have successfully changed the topic. Okay. You might say, I'm old enough to know when someone asks me that question, it means they're a little nervous. Uh, what, what brings you in today? So now you've completely reframed the situation and established the context that you have in fact treated patients before and they are not your first one. And you've also opened the door for the patient to tell more of their story and start to build the relationship. Okay. Next phase. Okay. So another thing to think about is that you do 
have experience. When a patient asks a young looking doctor, how long have you been doing this? This question often implies that they believe you may lack the experience to do a quality job. The first thing to do is to understand that you do have experience. By the time you graduate dental school, you've done several hundred procedures. This is not your first rodeo. At the University of Michigan, if I recall, we had our first patient care experiences in our first year doing profies. Clinical care then progressed to more and more complex treatment along the second, third, and fourth year. By the time you're in, in your first year outside of school, you'll honestly be amid your fifth year doing dentistry. Okay, so a dialogue I may have had with a patient early on may sound like, well, University of Michigan is really great because they start us working on patients our first year when many schools don't start until their third year. So at this point, I've been working on patients for six years. I've probably done this procedure several hundred times if that sets your mind at ease. You can also prime the patient to appreciate your experience. So in my office, you will find my diplomas and awards proudly displayed on the wall. You can't miss them when you walk inside. From my observation, if you just answer the question straight out of the gate, and just say, how old are you? Uh, 27. That only seems to add to the awkwardness if you just answer it directly. Um, so when a patient asks you their question and you just deadpan stare them in the eyes and say, I'm 28. Likely this moment will be followed by an awkward silence and just feel weird. Uh, so consider trying out the methods I laid out above. The straight number answer would be a strong way to communicate only if you really are older and just look young. So you could say, thanks for saying that. I'm actually 40. I've been doing this for 15 years. Few people are gonna have anything negative to say after that, and, and that's easy. But if you really are young, and you really are a new grad dentist, feel free to share some techniques that have worked for you or not worked for you, and try out some of the things that I have laid out above to get you through those um, sometimes awkward conversations of the first few years when you really are new at this and you really are young and still learning yourself as a, as a professional. All right, good luck everybody. Uh, Kaizen, let's all focus on getting a little bit better every day. If you like my videos and my content, invite other dentists and dental students to follow the Practice Biopsy blog, follow the Practice Biopsy group on Facebook, and follow the Practice Biopsy YouTube channel for more great content that I put a lot of work into. Have a nice day.